Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Recently, I, I spoke, uh, maybe a couple months back, about the seven habits that we as true Christians should be striving to establish in our lives. And I want to discuss the habits, uh, one of the habits that I, I spoke about. It. I, I said we can make a sermon out of every one of those habits. And the, the seven habits that I spoke about was obedience, prayer, trust and faith in God, and meditation on God's word and how to respond to God's spirit, the habit of giving and the habit of forgiving. Today I want to speak about prayer, I mean uh, trust and faith. In fact, the title of the sermon is going to be Place Your Trust and Faith in God. We're going to look, begin in, in Psalms chapter 31. While you're turning there, I'm going to make some comments. We know in this nation, the people seem to be living it up with the money that they're receiving from the government. You know, everybody's looking for unemployment checks, and they're happy to get it, and they don't even want to go to work. A lot of people on food stamps, they get receiving money because they can't afford their rent. All kind of subsidies from, from the government. And how, while our country has fallen apart, it's hard to sit back and watch our country, you know, just disintegrating before our eyes. Just in the last six, seven months, things have changed drastically in our country. It hurts. We know it's got to happen, but it's hard to watch it. And we need to be prepared, especially after the sermon we heard last week. You know, that was a tremendous sermon, and it ought to wake us up. The reality of what's taking place in our country, God tells us to be ready and to get ready, and we need to put our faith and trust in God. So I want to go through a number of scriptures uh, that deal with putting our uh, faith and trust in God. God warns us, you know, don't let these uh, events discourage us and make us want to throw in the towel. He will protect us. He will, he will save us. You know, we, we might experience some of the tribulations, but if we put our faith and trust in God, he will be there for us. Let's begin reading in, in, in uh, Psalm chapter 37. It says, fret not yourself because of evildoers, neither, neither be you envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither like the green herb. You know, he knows we're going to have those type feelings stirring in us. In verse 3, he said, trust in the Lord and do good, so shall you dwell in the land and Verily, you shall be fed. Delight yourselves also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. The first scripture I ever read in the Bible was this verse 4. My dad and I were doing carpenter work, and we would, sometimes if we lived close by, we would just go to his, he was living in a trailer, and uh, we'd fix our meal and heat up whatever we had planned, and eat our meal, and when we walked in, he went to his Bible, and he opened it up to Psalm 37, and he told me to read this. I had never read the Bible. He talked about it all the time, but I, he never, I never read it. So I, I looked at the scriptures, and he was telling me that uh, he trusted in God that God was going to bless him and bless his family. He said, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. And his desires of, that he had was to have his children be called by God. Now, that, to me, that was the farthest thing from my mind at the time. I read it. I didn't really get much out of it when I read it because my mind wasn't even on that. But I knew that was, we would talk about things during the day, some of the things uh, about what, what Christ was uh, teaching him through his spirit. 
He was, he was a, a part of Worldwide back in 55, around 55. So this, this scripture meant a lot to him. And verse 6, it said, He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light in your judgment in the, new, in, in, in the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself because of him who prospers in his way. Because the man who brings wicked devices to pass. It says, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself in any, any wise to do evil. Telling us we need to commit ourselves to him and trust in God. Don't allow all these other things that enter our mind to turn us away from God. And in a message I'm going to give today, I want us to, uh, I want to go through some different events uh, in the life of Abraham and in the life of David. Two of the individuals who are going to be uh, in top authority in God's kingdom. And the way they lived their lives, I want to go through some of those scriptures. Let's turn to uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, and we'll read verse 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6 says, But without faith it's impossible to please him, for he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that seek him. And in verse 1, he says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. The dictionary de uh, definition of faith just says, believing without proof. That's a good, short, concise uh, definition. I might also give the definition of trust from the dictionary. It says, a firm belief in the honesty and truthfulness, justice, or the power of a person or a thing. Let's turn back to Psalms. We'll start reading in verse, uh, Psalms chapter 2. And we'll read verses 11 and 12. A, a lot of these songs, uh, uh, psalms have to do with David. David seems to have had enemies pursue him at all times, so he, he trusted in God and he prayed to God often. And we'll, we'll see that as we go through a lot of the Psalms, uh, the Psalms that discuss uh, David's concerns. Psalm chapter 2, verse 11 says, Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. For us to have that awe of, of following God and to revere him, it says, kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled by a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. If we, we put our trust in God, he will bless us. And Psalm chapter 4, and we'll read verses 4 and 5. It says, Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in God. You know, today, the younger generation, uh, the young teenagers and everything, whenever they do something that they think is, is, is neat, or I maybe jump off a skateboard and flip and then fall back on a skateboard. That's awesome. You know, there's so many, all the things that they like, music, it's awesome, everything. Awesome ought to be a word that's reserved for God. God is awesome. And verse 4 said, stand in awe. We ought to be in awe of God. He is the supreme sovereign God. 
Then we need to have those inner feelings about who he is and what he does and how much love and concern he has for us and be thankful that he has called us out of this world and the, the, the way this world is going, we need to be out of it. But he has called us and given us a chance to understand his word. And we need to put our faith and trust in that. Psalm chapter 7 in verse 1, it says, oh, my, oh, Lord, my God, in you do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Again, this is the Psalm of David. And David feels the pressure of those who are after him, but what he feels that they are after him. Psalm chapter 9 and verse 10. And they that know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken them that seek you. Those that know you and seek you, you will bless. The first scripture I, re uh, I memorized was in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. God tells us to seek him. And if, you, if we seek him, he will bless us. And I'm, I'm talking about this today because this is important. We got to step up our degree of, of, of understanding God's word and dedication to the scripture. I know sometimes we read, we, we choose a, a word and do a word search and you'll go through the Bible and, 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 and check the different scriptures. And sometimes you, it's kind of boring and you say, well, I could have read those scriptures myself and God did the same thing as what you do in your sermon. But do you do that? Do you do a word search? And do you know the fruits of a word search? It's not only the scriptures that, that I'm reading. I read scriptures, uh, you know, two or three scriptures before and behind the scriptures, get the context of what, what God is talking about, and you discover a lot of different things. So as we go through this, I'm, I'm bringing in the thing that, that uh, David was concerned about. We'll continue reading in uh, chapter 16. Psalm chapter 16. And we'll re read verse 1. And David says, Preserve me, O God, for in you do I trust. O my soul, you have said unto the Lord, You are my Lord, my goodness extended not to you. Verse 3 said, but to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent in whom is all my delight, their sorrow shall be multiplied and you hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer nor take the names from my lips. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. You maintain my lot. Never, never realized that they had that scripture about the saints that are in the earth. A proof that when you die, you don't go to heaven. You go to the grave. I don't know if I, I know I read through the whole Bible and everything, but I don't remember that verse. And just by reading a verse ahead and a couple of verses, you know, uh, uh, forward, it, uh, I read that, that scripture and never read, don't remember reading it before. Psalm chapter 18, verse 1 to 3. It says, I will love you, O Lord, my, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my anchor, my stability, and my fortress. The Lord is my deliverer and my strength, in whom I will trust. The Lord is my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. It shows the dependence that David had on, on God 
and his dedication to seeking him and the close relationship that he had because he poured his heart out in prayer whenever he felt the need, when he needed God's strength, God's spirit. Psalm 55. Psalm 55, verses 22 and 23. It says, Cast your burdens upon the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. But you, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in you. Again, showing his allegiance to God. Psalm 73. Psalm 73 and verse 28. Find it. He says, But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all his work. David trusted in God. And David talked about God. He talked about his trust and his faith in God. And he knew that God would come through for him. That God loved him. And he didn't hesitate to go and talk to him. And beseech him. Psalms 91. Psalm 91, verse 1 through 15, we would read, well, I just we'll go through 16. This is a psalm of comfort. That he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestle. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. His trust shall be your shield and your buckler. We read in that one in verse 3 about being a snare and a noisome pestle. You ever had any, any problem with? Uh, pestilence or uncomfortable with you know different things you take like uh, when you go fishing and you get out there and you got the gnats all around you they drive you crazy or you're hunting in the woods and a mosquito you hit a mosquito in an area a dark area or whatever it'll drive you crazy after a while I mean, you can slap so many times but God will relieve you of that I've been in situations like that where uh, I had to get out of the woods and stuff because mosquitoes were just driving me nuts. You couldn't get away from them. It says, he, that, uh, he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. The truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that lies that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the, the destruction that washes a wasted at, at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, you have made him your habitation. There shall no evil befall, befall you, neither shall any plague come near you, near your dwelling. And he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Reminds you that God is going to take care of you. When we go to the Feast of Tabernacles, God promises that he will keep people from desiring our profit. When we put our faith and trust in God, he's there for us. Verse 12, he says, They shall bear you up in your hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the 
the lion and the adder, and the young lion and the dragon shall you trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He knows who I am. God knows who we are. We are his sheep. He knows our voice. If we talk to him, we converse with him, have conversations with him. If we trust in him and have faith in him, we have a connection. We don't have to introduce ourselves when we pray to God. He knows who we are. That's the relationship that we need. And we need to allow that, that trust and faith to grow. He said, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show my salvation. Psalms 118. Psalms 118, verse 8. Verse 9, he said, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in men. But do we know that? There's not many people we can put confidence in. He said, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in princes. Even if you know the hierarchy of you know, the politician, you got the inside track on everything. It's still better to put your, your confidence in God. You can trust him. 119, Psalm 119, verse 33. He says, Teach me, O Lord, the ways of your statute, and I shall keep it until the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Yes, shall I, sh I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go into the path of your commandments, for in there do I delight. Incline my heart to your testimonies, and not to covetousness, covetousness. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken you me in the way. Establish your word unto your servant who is devoted to your fear. Turn away my reproach which I fear, for the judgments are good. Behold, I have longed after the precept. Quicken me in your righteousness. Let your mercies come also unto me, O Lord even your salvation according to your word. And so shall I wherewith to answer him that reproaches me because I trust in your word. Scriptures that give us strength by reviewing them. Let's go back to Proverbs chapter 3. Back forward to Proverbs chapter 3. We read verses 1 through 6. He's talking about the blessing that God gives you. He said, My son, forget not my law, but let my heart keep my commandment. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to you. When you're obedient to God, he'll add time for, for you to live. You know, we all, a lot of people say, well, that was his time. I doesn't have a time dedicated to when we're going we're gonna to die. You can change the length of days that you live by being obedient and trusting in God. He said, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them about your neck and write them upon the table of your heart. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Remember life. So shall you find favor and good understanding in sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your steps. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to your navel and your marrow of your bones. Honor the Lord with your substance with the first fruit of your increase. If we love God and we want to obey him, God will bless us. But we need to put our, our faith and trust in him. Let's turn to Jeremiah. 
Jeremiah chapter 39. Jeremiah 39 and verse 18. He said, I will surely deliver you, for you shall not fall by the sword, but by your life shall be a for a prey, and because you have put your trust in me, said the Lord, I will deliver you because you trusted me. And Nahum, God, in 1 7, and we won't turn there, but he said, God knows them who trust in him. When we have trust in God, we have connection with God. We have confidence in God. And it honors God. Let's turn to Mark, chapter 10. Mark, chapter 10. I didn't take any scriptures out of Isaiah because all the, all the statements that they made in Isaiah was just just trust in him, trust in him, but it never had any uh, descriptive uh, adjectives to go with it. I know when you, you're going through this one by one like this, it gets, gets hard to, to keep your attention on it. Mark chapter 10, verses 23 and 24. Then Jesus looked around about and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter the kingdom of God? Usually if you have riches, you put your trust in riches. That's what you have your, your mind on. And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again and said, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God? When you have money and a lot of material things, they take up your time. You got to watch that nobody gets your money. When you got material things, you got to have upkeep, take care of. The more material things you have, the more time is taken away from God. I learned that lesson. I got, I had lots and lots of things was involved in all kinds of different things all the time. Didn't have enough time to study God's Word. Verse 27 said, Jesus looks upon them and said, With men it's impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. As I said earlier, trust is much like faith. Faith without works, is dead. We can say that trust without confidence is useless. I want to turn back to uh, Genesis chapter 12, and I want to go through the trials and the tests that Abram had, Abram had to go through. And show the patience and the dedication he had to God. God made him a lot of promises, but it was a lot of time before these promises were fulfilled. And Abraham was patient enough to wait on God, and God blessed him. But God tested him too. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, he said, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get you out of your country and from your kindred and from your father's house unto a land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curses you. And in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. Abraham, in verse 7, that the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto your seed will I give this land. And there built he, uh, Abraham, uh, Abram built an altar 
to the Lord who appeared unto him. God is working with Abraham, making promises, and Abraham is obeying. Genesis 13, read verses 14 to 18. Genesis 13, verse 14 through 18. Then the Lord said unto Abram that after Lot had separated himself from, from him, Lot had chosen another area to go in, he said, lift up now your eyes and look forward, uh, look from the place where you are uh, standing and look to the north, south, east, and west. He says, all the land which you see, to you will I give it and to your seed forever. What a promise. And verse 16, he says, I will make your seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then your seed could be numbered. Arise and walk through the land in length of it and the breadth of it. I will give it unto you. And Abram removed his tent, and he came and he dwelt in the plains of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and he built an altar to God. God was making tremendous uh, promises to Abram. In chapter 15, verse 2, continuing the, the example. Verse 1, he said, After these things, the word of God came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. And Abram said unto the Lord, How will you give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Ab Abraham said, Behold to me, you given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my heir. And the word of God came unto him, saying, This shall not be your heir, but he that shall come forth out of your own bowels shall be your heir. Abraham was waiting to fulfill, uh, have that promise fulfilled to him. And he had to wait. Patient, took patience. Drop it down to verse 18. It said, The same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, that unto your seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river Euphrates showing him all the property that, that God was going to give him. Chapter 16. We see that we know the example of uh, Hagar and Sarah. Sarah was uh, became impatient, wondering when she was going to have the child, and she decided to give Hagar her handmaid to Abram. And he went into her, and she had a child. But that was not the child of promise. Abraham had to wait even longer. At this time, when, when uh, Ishmael was born, Abram was 86 years old. When God first began telling him about the plans that he had for him, he was 75. So it's 11 years since he first started talking to him. That's a long time to wait for a promise. In our, in our lifetime, I don't know how it, how it is when you live to be 150, 200 years old or whatever, but 11 years is a long time to wait for a promise to be fulfilled. Uh, chapter 17, we'll read verses 1 through 5. He said, Abram, Abram was 90 years old now and 9. When the Lord appeared to him, again, that's a longer period of time. Uh, what is that, 15 years from 75? And God appeared unto Abram, and he said unto him, I am the Almighty God, and I walk before me and be you perfect. I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him. He said, 
As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. He said, Neither shall I your name be called Abram, but your name will be called Abraham. And down in verse 15, he changed Sarah, Sarai's name to Sarah. God was, was blessing him and talking to him and giving uh, Abraham confidence that he had to wait on God's decision of when he would have a child. As it turned out, when Abraham was a hundred years old, Sarah was pregnant and she uh, gave birth to Isaac. Let's turn to uh, Genesis chapter 22. We read verses 1 and 2. It came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take now your son, Isaac. Isaac was, at this time was about a, a teenager, probably a young teenager. And God is asking him to give the child that he's been waiting on all these years, 25 years. He's waiting on the son. And now this is uh, probably another 14, 15 years added to that. And God tells Abraham, to take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and get you a land into a land of Moriah, and offer him a burnt offering upon the mountain, which I will tell you. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. And he, Isaac, uh, claved the wood for the burnt offering. And he rose up and he went to the place which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Stay here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they both went together. And Isaac spoke up, and he said, Abraham, uh, to his Abraham, his father, and he said, My father. And uh, Abraham said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide him a lamb for a burnt offering. So it went, they went both together. That must have been a shocking experience. You know, in asking Abraham to sacrifice his son. But Abraham knew God, too. You know, he was in constant uh, connection with God, talking to him, praying to him, you know, getting information from him, and building his trust and faith in him. And he knew that God didn't believe in uh, killing individuals or sacrificing individuals, babies especially, but even more so not to not to kill a young man. So they came to the place where God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son, and he laid him on the altar. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called out to Abraham, and Abraham said, Here I am. And the angel said, Lay not your hand upon the lad, neither do you anything but now I know that you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld your son. I know you're dedicated to God, and you will do whatever God asks you to do. And you will not hold back the most precious one to you. You are willing to give up your son for God. That was a trial. We might have some trials later on in life. That'll be hard to do. We didn't look back at this example of Abraham and see how faithful he was, how trustful he was, and realize 
not only him, but Isaac was faithful. We don't, want to, we don't read anything about Isaac complaining and fight, trying to fight to get loose. So he evidently probably got up on, the, on the, the altar to burn and get burned up himself. He probably got up there by, his, by himself. That's faith and trust in God. A marvelous story. A, a tearjerker. It, it gets in your heart. The dedication of an individual who loves God. I don't know if our trial will be that, that hard to, to endure, but we're going to have some tough trials. Some, some of us will give our life. But God tells us if we trust and have faith in him, he will bless us. And we'll be first fruit. That's something to look forward to. That sermon we heard last week was, was a, a moving sermon. I realized that we're not at that stage yet. We need to, we need to really dedicate our lives to God and put our faith and trust in, in him. Not be worried about the, whatever happens in this world. And we here to learn how to be able to teach others about God, to draw close to God. In verse 23, it says, Sarah was 127 years old when she died. Chapter 25, that Abraham, uh, Rebecca had died too, uh, not Rebecca, Sarah had died in uh, verse 25 and verse 5, he said when at the end of his life, Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac, all his belongings, all the land, all of the, the things that God had promised him, they belong to Isaac. And it said, uh, verse 7, all the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived was 175 years. An older man. Now we read also in, in verse 1 that Abraham took a wife Keturah, and they had six children. And we don't read anything about the exploits of the six children. I think the time now was he was about 137 years old uh, and had probably had 38 years to go before he died. But he never, you know, we don't have a record of the things that took place in those 38 years with his children. I kind of liken it to the time that uh, John the Baptist was uh, deheaded. He had, he had a short ministry. He had an important role. And God said there was no greater man than John the Baptist. But he fulfilled the purpose. He led the way for Jesus Christ. You know, baptizing individuals to repentance. But he was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And after he finished that mission, that was his responsibility. And God allowed him to be decapitated. He had finished his work. Abraham had finished his work. Abraham's mission was to establish the nation of Israel. And what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they established it. What about Jacob? Was he uh, trusting in, did he have faith in God? At the end of his life, in verse 28, I mean, uh, chapter 28, 
and verse 20, said, Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God be with me and will keep me in his way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And the stone which I have set a pillar shall be God's house. And all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth. I will tithe on all that I own. So Jacob began to worship God and have put faith and trust in God. And as we know, he had 12 sons who were. Uh, and his name was changed to Israel. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob established the nation of Israel. And God blessed them. And God has blessed us because we are descendants of Israel, of Jacob. And God will continue to bless us. And God will continue to protect us. God will, will do what he did with Abraham and keep his promises if we put our faith and trust in God. We just got to realize how serious the times that we live in. We got to be more dedicated to our God. 